Okay, today is October 31st, 2022. And I'm gonna do a quick example of 2D in elastic collision, a special case that uh, has an interesting, easy solution, okay? A solution, a, kind of a qualitative solution. I'm not gonna solve it quantitatively. I'm just, just gonna solve it qualitative, qualitatively. So, you know, it's a totally elastic collision problem. And uh, with mass one equal to mass two and, and V naught one, V naught two equal to zero. That is this other condition here that uh, you have to know, okay? Okay, using the simplifying conditions, right? M1 equal to M2 equal to M, V0 equal to zero. They are both two equations. Oh, let me fix it here. It should be final two, right? Final two reduces, reduce two. Okay, so we go copy that, paste it here. M1 equal to M2 because M1 equal to M2 equal to M. Okay, here go. I can substitute everything here as the same symbol. V naught two is equal to zero. Consequently, this term disappear. And we go to the next step which is going to cancel the common terms. You got the common terms right in here. This, this, and this. Okay, and now we have a very interesting, we have this vectorial equation and we have this scalar equation. And both of them putting together has a very interesting behavior and solution, right? Let me get my P37 illustration. Must be this one here. Oh. Uh, maybe it's this one here. Yeah, let's, let's try this one here. Yeah. Okay, which one is this? So here we go. We have seen that before, right? Here we go. And we did, okay, this is the two dimensional inelastic collision, right? And Okay, here's the case of the two dimensionally, the two dimension totally elastic collision. We have two masses, they have two objects, the, both objects have the same mass, one is at rest, the other one is moving towards it. That's what we see in the pool table, okay? Something like that is what we see in the pool table. So one mass is going towards the other and it's not a head-on collision, it's a slanted collision. When they collide, the center of this object is a little bit off with respect to the center of this other object. And because they're a little bit off, the, the force, instead of being along the x-axis, right? The force is applied to those two different balls. Instead of being along the x-axis is going to be, it's gonna make an angle with the x-axis, okay? So we have this final velocity of two and this final velocity of one. The question is, what's gonna be the angle between those two, right? And they move away. Okay, according to our 
equations that we saw right here. Okay, what we have, we have that V naught one is the final one plus the final two is a vectorial equation. Remember, the vectorial equation. V naught one is going to be the sum of the final one and the final two, right? Or the final two plus the final one. That's the vectorial, equa vectorial equation that you saw there before. But we also have the equation that comes from the conservation of kinetic energy. Okay. So what does it mean? You know, it means that what we have right here is in reality a right angle triangle, okay? Because it's telling me that V naught one is square is must be equal to V final one square plus V final two square. That's what uh, this thing is all about, okay? So they, those, you know, the velocity vectors V final one and V final two here, they must make a 90 degree angle even though it doesn't look like, but they are supposed to make a 90 degree angle, okay? So this illustration should be a little bit, you know, the final velocity two should be a little bit more. So I'm gonna draw here the go like that. That was supposed to be a 90 degree angle, even if, even though it doesn't appear. If I were to redraw this collision, you know, I would reposition my final one and the final two so it looks more like a 90 degrees, okay? So that's what you have to know about about that. And now we can move Okay, the above two equations, the above two equations mean put together, put together means that the final one and the final two make an angle of 90 degrees. But don't forget, this is a special case of totally elastic collision in the two dimensional space. Okay, so we can, okay, we can now erase all that stuff here. We don't need that anymore. And we can start moving towards, and here, I'm going to keep this one here, okay? Because it has a little bit more of details than what I explained, right? Go. Okay, and then I'm gonna erase that. And let's talk about, now we're talking about chapter. Let's go to where Wiley Plus. Am I sharing the screen? Yes, right? I'll be posting the homework for chapter seven soon. Chapter seven, right? So far we have, oh, uh, uh, that's gonna be the homework. This homework is the everything for, oh no, three, four, five, and six is for the exam on Wednesday, right? Three, four, five, and six. There is no, this one is not gonna show up in the, in the exam, but it's gonna show up in the second exam, but it's gonna show up in the, third exam, I will be posting the homework eight, which is gonna be chapter seven soon. Now, what we wanna do, you wanna go cover chapter eight now. Let's launch the book here. 
rotational kinematics, okay? Rotational motion and angular displacement. That's where we start. Angular velocity and angular acceleration, the equation of rotational kinematics, angular variables and tangential variables, centripetal acceleration, and rolling motion. Okay, we're going to do all those sections here of rotational kinematics. Okay, so let's start with this one first. Chapter eight, you know, we're going to do 8.1 through 8.6. Through 8.6. Don't forget, just to remind you again. You know, exam two is scheduled for uh, November 2nd, the day after tomorrow. After tomorrow, chapters three through six. Through six. Okay, there'll be no lab showing up there. At this time, I'm gonna leave in the labs for the chapter, for exam three, okay? Otherwise it's too much material for you. And then let's see if I can get some illustrations for you. Mm -hmm. ah, interesting. I don't have any good illustration here for you. I have to draw it from scratch. Okay. Okay, let's start talk about the rotational motion. I'm gonna use this illustration here, okay? So here you go, consider pure rotational motion. Okay, consider a pure rotational motion. We have a, a rigid body just like that, and it, this guy is just rotating around an axis. Okay, what uh, this thing represents is the direction of this point here uh, represents, supposed to represent the direction of rotation, but it's gonna be on, let me see here. I gotta do the other direction. Okay, yeah, I mixed up the, the vectors here. Consider a disk, okay? And this one got to be inverted. If I want to do it right, I want to make it ensure that uh, it's correct. No. How much? Uh, no. Read. Uh, lines. Yeah, okay, that's the one. Here you go. That's the right one. That's the right way to represent that. That's rotation. Notice that I put a dot right in here. Okay. So suppose we have this disk rotating in the counterclockwise direction. Okay, if it's rotating in the counterclockwise direction, we represent a vector, a rotation vector coming out of the board, coming out of the plane of my computer. Okay, why do we do that? There's a reason for that. You know, this, the, this direction is determined by the right-hand rule, okay? If your rigid body your, is rotating in this direction, we, we say that the vector velocity, right? The vector angular velocity is given by the direction of the thumb, okay? 
if this object here were to be rotating in the other direction, let me make another one right here. If this object were to be rotating in the other direction, okay? How would we represent this rotation? Okay, we would represent this rotation in the other direction. And on the top of that, of putting a dot in there, we wouldn't put a dot. The dot represents the tip of the arrow, okay? So we would represent this rotation by a different symbol. And the symbol, let me get the symbol here for you, is right, okay, right here, this one. Okay, the back of your arrow. Okay, here we go. Okay, the back of your arrow, you know, again, is given by the right hand rule. Just pure rotation. So those are the symbols that we use to describe rotation. Rotation outside the board, rotation into the board. Well, there is more to it. There is more to it, okay? I'm going also to represent the X and Y axis. Here go, I'm gonna use this guy here. X and Y axis here. And like that. And we are going to start following a point anywhere. point anywhere in this circle, in this so-called rigid body. Okay, I'm gonna make it here. This point. Let's say a time t equal to zero. Let's say this point is right here. I call it point A. Huh? Point O. Point A, time t equal to zero. A little bit. Later, a time t equal to T1, T, I'm gonna put T greater than zero. Now this point moves elsewhere around here, right? And the velocity of this point is gonna make an angle with the horizontal, okay? And what else I'm gonna do, right? I'm gonna also describe the vector position of this point, right? That was the final vector position. And let's not forget that we also have a Angle, I'm gonna use this guy here. Here, that we call angle theta. Symbol. Okay. 
And what's this angle theta? Is the angular, we call theta this angular position. Okay? Note that theta is going to be, this angular position of theta is going to be the same for any other point along this line, right? And by the way, I also must state that this circle has a radius big R. Okay. So that's what uh, we have. Initially, we had an angular position here. Initially, we had here an angular position theta equal to zero. I want to change the color of this guy, okay? And later on, again, I'm going to change the color of this one. And now we have this other angular position. Just like in kinematics physics, right? 1D, 1D motion. Okay, so... Rotational motion and angular, let's put the uh, rotational kinematics, right? Uh, rotational kinematics. Kinematics. So recall from 1D kinematics, kinematics that we define the the position of an object, position of an object, right? An object. Then uh, we define the displacement of that object. In rotational kinematics, in rotational kinematics, we're going to do the same thing. Same thing. No? We define the angular position of a point in a rigid body, right? Then we define this point the we define the angular displacement of this point. If here we define the position as being x, and here we define the displacement as being delta x, okay, here. Of this point, we are going to call it delta theta, angular displacement. And the angular position is going to be called theta. Okay. Make sense? Okay. In this case, delta theta, you know. In this case, in this case, the angular displacement can be written in terms of the in terms of the arc lengths. S and the radius. I even gonna say instead of S, I'm gonna call it arc length delta S. Okay. And the radius R, which is the very definition of angle, right? We covered that before. Oh, 
see that? Equal to what? R over delta S. And what is delta S? And I even, I'm not gonna, uh, not the radius, but uh, let's see. In this case, the angular displacement can be written in terms of the arc lengths described by the point and not, not the radius S, but and its distance, the distance of the point from the axis of rotation. And instead of calling big R, I'll call that small r. That would be better. Okay. And let me illustrate how it looks like here, right? If we are talking about point A, and I'm going to name it, here you go, this is point A, this is point A prime, and this other one is point A two prime. Okay. If you're talking about point A, lower R is going to be equal to capital R. Okay. Oh. You go if you're talking about point A. If you're talking about point A prime, okay, the angular position of point A prime is going to be R prime divided by this other delta S right in here. Let me ex. Let me denote, yeah, that's the one I want. Ay, 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 ay. Good. We don't want that. I'm going to increase it a little bit more. Delta S. Pico, that is going to be my Delta S prime that I'm going to put is a red color as well to distinguish from the other one. Okay. And this other one here. Okay, and that is going to be my delta S, right, for A. Okay, and this other one here is going to be my delta S2 prime, right? Let's label them. Here you go. Delta S. Change it to symbol. And I'm going to change it with a color as well. The next one is going to be delta S prime. Right? And the other one here is going to be delta S two prime. If I do more than that, the, the drawings start to become too busy, right? Too crowded. And we cannot see it anymore. What's, uh, what's happening there, right? In the drawing, so I'm going to write it down. In the drawing for points A, A prime, and A to prime, comma, their angular displacement from the x axis is given by, okay, so here you go, delta theta equal to r over delta s, delta theta 
R prime over delta S R, delta S prime. And the other one is going to be R two prime over delta S two prime. Okay. Because they all lie along the same lines, that their delta theta is going to be the same. Because all these points lie along the same line, same radial line, right? Their angular displacement is going to be the same. Okay. However, if you were to treat a different point, a, a point at a different place, the angular displacement uh, is going to be, might be different. Angular displacement from the x axis, okay? So that's what we have for this one angular displacement. And then what else we have to do? We're just going to follow the same uh, recipe that we did for. We are continue to follow the recipe that we did for one-dimensional one kinematics. Okay, one-dimensional kinematics. So here we go. Okay, going back to our notes here. Okay, so remember, right? First was the Linear, I'm going to start calling out the linear position, right? That we define linear position X. Position X of an object. Then the linear displacement, uh, delta X. Then it's average velocity, VAVG. Right, then, then it's instantaneous velocity, V. Then it's average acceleration, A, I, A, V, G. Then, it's instantaneous acceleration, A, just A. Now I can start fixing all those symbols. Like that. Okay, so how this recipe applies to angular kinematics. Okay, first we have the angular position of the object, theta. Then we have its angular displacement. Oh, its angular displacement. Delta theta. Then we have this, ah, uh, let's see, not linear, angular position, right? Angular position. Then we have its angular displacement. Then we have its average angular velocity. And the average angular velocity we represent by the Greek letter omega. Then we have it is instantaneous angular velocity. And I'm gonna tell you how, how, how that's defined, right? We have it's in uh, average angular acceleration. And we have it 
instantaneous angular acceleration. Did you get the idea? So let me see if I already have everything. I have everything written down here. Doesn't look like I do. Yeah, I have to write it from scratch. Okay, so I'm gonna put here table, comparative table. Comparative table. Insert. One, two, three. Position displacement, average velocity, instantaneous velocity, average acceleration, instantaneous acceleration, right? Quantity, quantity or, or definitions, right? No, not quantity, but definitions, okay? Position, here is gonna be linear, here is gonna be angular. I call it X. I call it theta. Good. Displacement. I'm gonna copy what I have there. Here you go. Linear displacement is going to be delta x. Angular displacement is going to be delta t. Okay, I'm going to italicize this one. Let me make this table nicer, right? Let's go. And I am going to bold face it, bold face it here. Let's go ahead and Okay, it go. Two point six six, two point eighty three, two point eighty three. Oh, good. Okay, and you know if this guy is X minus X not right. This one is going to be theta minus theta naught. Theta minus theta naught. Stretch it a little bit. Simple enough, right? Displacement, average velocity linear is going to be what? Now I'm gonna put my, my equation there inside to make it easier to write. Linear, average velocity, here you go. V average ABG is equal to delta X over Delta oh, huh. Delta. Hey, what the heck is going on here? We go Delta T. Good. That's supposed to be italicized to look at nicer. Average velocity. That's the linear average velocity. What about the average angular velocity? the average angular velocity is going to be that. And then we replace that by the symbol omega. Okay, instantaneous angular. Uh, let me change a little bit here. I'm gonna spell out completely average velocity. Right, and then we have instantaneous velocity. Instantaneous velocity. Uh, I can 
squeeze this guy a little bit more. Okay, instant, uh, instant uh, news. Velocity. And it's gonna be, you know, V. What else? Limit. Limit, uh, gonna do better than that. Equation here, we have a limiting symbol here. Blah, 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 here you go. But I don't have, I don't need the rest, right? Limit of all the stuff here and limit as delta T goes to zero. And delta x goes to zero as well. As well. Whereas delta x goes simultaneously to zero. We have the same situation here. Limit delta theta, delta t, delta theta goes right in here, or delta x is, and my omega. Right, goes right here. I see someone else is trying to join us. What time is that? 9.50 already, right? We start, we start. Let me finish that and then we go in our break, right? And then I'm gonna use those two definitions that we have, average acceleration. Notice that, hey man, I'm calling that average acceleration and I am, uh, and I am, uh, is specifying that here are the linear terms and here are the angular terms, the angular definition. Uh, average acceleration is gonna be A delta V for instantaneous velocity. And what do we get? Uh, let's see, yeah, it should be, here should be alpha. Okay, and here should be Delta Omega, since we now have, uh, and of course, Delta Omega is going to be Omega minus Omega naught. Here's the acceleration. Here is going to be Delta V. Here is angular acceleration. And here again is going to be angular velocity. What else can we do about this? Okay, what else can we do? Oh, very important. Angular velocity is written down in terms of radians, okay? The unit of angular, angular position, okay? The units of, let, let's put another one here, units. Okay, units, okay? For angular, term. I'm gonna do something else here. Angular. Uh, Merge cells, okay. Definition. I can do the same here, right? And now my table will start to become bigger and bigger, right? Definitions go. Here's mathematical definition. Mathematical definition. And Units. Like that, linear. Make it look nicer. Huh? Tables are a very good thing, the very good tool to understand some difficult concepts, okay? Mathemat linear, mathematical, that you can put the same thing. Mathematical definition, okay, and units. What are the units for position? Is the meter. What? Oh gosh, I, I, I 
okay, Microsoft has this odd, odd way of, let's see, good. Unit for Delta X is also the meter, the unit for average velocity is going to be meters per second. The unit for instantaneous velocity is going to be meters per second. The unit for average acceleration is going to be meter per second squared. And we have the same unit here for the instantaneous for the instantaneous acceleration. Okay. And what about the units for, for the angular quantities? Okay, the units for the angular quantity is the radian. The radian, right? That we write down at RAD. Here too, is going to be the radian because it's a displacement. Well, italicize them to make it look nice. Don't forget the radian is in reality, you know, uh, a depth unit, okay? Because it's going to be length divided by length. That's how radian, where that radian comes from. The, the very definition of angle is, uh, is what? Delta S over, let's see, it's delta S over R, right? Let me see if I define it properly. Yeah, yeah, I mixed up. I mixed up. It's not R over delta S, it's delta S over R. Sorry for the go. Okay, delta S over R is the arc length divided by the radial distance. Okay. Arc length divided by the radial distance. If you have any doubt, just remember that the, the, the circle has a 2 pi r length, right? 2 pi r divided by r is going to be 2 pi, right? Full length. And here is going to be prima. Here is going to be 2 prima. Here is going to be 2 prime as well. And because of that, the radian is in reality. It's a unitless unit, okay? That's why it's so difficult sometimes to understand what the radiance is all about. I used to confuse what the, what the heck of this radiance is all about, right? I used to get confused about it. And finally, I figured out why. That's because the radiance is a unitless unit, okay? The radians that you, but we, we, we still give it a name, red, right? Radian, because we want to distinguish it from the other unit for angle, which is the degree. Okay. That's why we, we come up with this, you know, funny unit radian. And here, what do we have here? Here we have radians divided by seconds. That's the unit of angular velocity. Same thing here. Same thing here. Here is going to be what? Radians per second divided by seconds, which is radian squared. And here is radian squared as well. Radians per second squared as well. So let's see if I have everything in good shape here. I'm going to give my last touches to my masterpiece, right? I like to call my tables a masterpiece. Okay. And my equations too. Here you go. Okay, angular. So that's uh, 
And then it's just a matter of applying those equations, just a matter of applying those definitions. But there is more to it. It's 9.59 right now. Let's go for our attendance and then we can go for our break. Jade, are you there? Jade Biscayla. I don't see Jade here. Vanessa, Vanessa Bonillo. Good, next is Fisher. Are you there, Fisher? Uh, Fisher, I see Fisher in my list, but I don't hear from him. Next, no, wait a minute, sure, sorry, I skip uh, Ashley, right? Ashley, are you there? Let's see. Ashley, I can see Ashley as well, but she's not answering. Blessing. Here. Thank you, Blessing. Janet Garcia. I don't see Janet. Next is Raymond Garcia. Thank you, Raymond. Lily. Okay, Ashley, thank you. What about Lily? Okay, thank you. Michael. Sorry, Professor, I'm here right now. Thank you. Wendy. Wendy here. Uh, Joshua Jimenez. No Joshua. Anna Lopez. Anna Gabriela Lopez. No Anna, no. Uh, Basilio Lopez. Thank you, Basilio. Bahag. Okay, okay. Let's see if Fisher just answered me. Good. Another one is Daisy Mariscal. Thank you, Daisy. Alejandra Marmolejo. I don't see Alejandra here. Next is Amarilis. Here. Thank you, Marilis. Yesenia Montes Rodriguez. Hi, Yesenia. Okay, I don't uh, hear anything from my Yesenia. I'm going to put a star right here. Mary. Mary. Yeah. Yeah, here. Mary. Okay, Daisy. Um, Mariska. Okay. Ryan. Oh, thank you, Yesenia. Ryan, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, Artur Pacheco. Okay, thank you, Artur. Jennifer Pettis. Next is Labelud. Good, thank you, Labelud. Lydia, Rosa, Buen Rostro. Lydia, I don't see Lydia. Next is Donia. Here. Thank you, Donia. Alika. Doesn't look like Alika is here. Okay. Label pointed. Yep. Brianna Valencia. Next is Mia Villa Lobos. Here, Professor. Thank you. And Justena Yusef. Are you there, Justena? Yeah. Okay. So, how many students do we have? 39? No, it's not 39. Can't be 39. Some. Uh, Huh. How come I have 39 here? Something wrong here. Oh, because I put nine. Joshua, he made it. Okay, he's supposed to. Okay, I got it. Okay, Joshua and Anna are not here, right? No and no. Okay, now we should have the right. Good. 21. Yep, we have 21 here. Good, 10.05 right now. Let's go for our break. Break, 10.05.
to 1020 a.m. Uh, don't have any questions. You have any questions? No? Okay, so I see you in 15 minutes. Hello, Professor. I just wanted to let you know that I'm here now. Who is that? This is Fisher. Fisher, yeah. I I, I gave you attendance. Fisher, let's see, right in here, Fisher. Here you go. Okay. Thank you for letting me know. Hello, I'm back here, so I am a little bit late. So let's start sharing the screen again. Okay, so we have all those angular quantities, angular definitions, right? Not quantities, but definitions. And they follow side by side the, the definitions of the Kinem the kinematic definition that we had before, the one the kinematic definition that we had be before. So, and that what this 8.1 is all about. See the arc length here divided by radius, right? That's the definition of angle, by the way. And uh, if you have a 230 degrees displacement, it's going to be 2 pi r divided by r, which is 2 pi radian. One radian is 57.3 degrees. OK, and we can skip this one here. And what are we going to have? Angular velocity. We cover angular velocity as well. Okay, definition of angular velocity, you know, angular displacement divided by elapsed time. Let me show you. Okay, and we have here this example of the gymnast, and they are asking what find the average angular velocity of the gymnast. It's kind of this, 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 uh, let's take a quick look at gymnast on high bar swings through two revolutions in time in a time of 1.9 seconds, okay? Two revolutions is what? Two revolutions, one revolution is two pi radians, two revolutions, four pi radians. Okay, so this is a straightforward type of example, right? Four, uh, four pi radians divided by 1.9. That's what gonna be the average angular velocity of the gymnast. Okay, now they put a negative here. Why did they put a negative here? Okay, they put a negative here because the gymnast is moving in a clockwise fashion. Okay, remember that clockwise motion is negative, counterclockwise motion is positive. Let's put that in the notes. Okay, uh, for angular velocity, for angular velocity, comma. For angular velocity, uh, let's see. For angular displacement and velocity, comma. Clockwise motion is negative, and counter clockwise motion is positive, okay? That's the standard that we use for, for defining the sign. Okay, so, so that one, instantaneous angular velocity, just like we had there, angular acceleration, Right, definition of angular acceleration, just like uh, I mentioned as well. Angular acceleration is the jet or let, here you go. 
a jet let, let's take a quick look at this example here you go a jet revving its engine a jet awaiting clearance for takeoff is momentarily stopped on the runway that's a standard procedure right just before a jet takes off the he must come to a complete stop on the runway in general as seen from the front of one engine the fan blades are rotating with an angular velocity of 110 radians per second in the clockwise direction. That's why he put negative here. So if you look from the front, this fan blade is rotating the clockwise direction, where the negative sign indicates a clockwise rot rotation. As the plane takes off, the angular velocity of the blades reach minus 330 radians per second in a time of 14 seconds. Simple enough. Find the angular acceleration, assuming it to be constant. Okay, that's straightforward, right? This final angular velocity minus initial angular velocity divided by delta t. So the angular acceleration is going to average angular acceleration is going to be negative because this negative term is going to overtake this other positive term, okay? Check your understanding and the equations for rotational kinematics. Okay, what are the equations for rotational kinematics? It's the same equations for linear motion, okay? Let's take, let's uh, expand what we have said, or we have done here, right? Uh, recall that for linear kinematics, We also studied uniform motion and uniform accelerated motion. Okay, we have the same type, no, not the same type, but uh, we have the the angular counterpart for this, these types of linear motion, right? So let's go ahead and build up our table again. I'm gonna use, let's see how I'm gonna do here. Let's see if I can take advantage, right? Of everything that we did. I'm not gonna need the units anymore. Okay, I'm not gonna need the units anymore so I can delete that stuff. Yep, linear. I don't need this, this one either. Left. Okay. Uh, I don't need, let's see what, what I need here. It's not gonna be definition. Yeah, yeah, definition. This um, uniform motion, right? Equations, I can put here equations. I don't need mathematical definition anymore. So I'm gonna put my linear parameter here, my angular parameter is gonna be here as well. At this point of time, you know, uniform motion should uh, remember. Uh, let's see, I'll, I'll, I'll use this, I'll use this guy here. There you go. We have X equal to X naught plus VT, right? Oh, we have exactly the same equation, but with different symbols. Final angular position is equal to initial angular position plus omega t. That's the equation for uniform motion. Then we also have the equation for uniform 
accelerated motion. And then we're going to have more equations because of that. I'm going to consume at least two lines. Okay, we start with the equation for the velocity. Okay, V equal to V naught plus AT, right? So if you have the case of rotational motion in which you have uniform accelerated uniform angular acceleration accelerated motion the equation is going to look like that exactly like the equation for the linear motion and then we have one more the other one is going to be for the position right x naught plus v naught t plus half a t is squared so you know remember in order to understand angular motion you have to understand linear motion if you didn't learn linear motion well well enough you got to review that right so you can follow what we're talking about here and here what we do you know we go ahead substitute x by theta and v v by omega and A for alpha. Okay, what else? Uniform accelerated motion, one more step. There is one more thing that we can do here because the uniformly accelerated motion has more than three results. Merge cell, I don't need that anymore. What is the other one? Well, we have that funny accelerated, well, average accelerated velocity, right? AVG, AVG, remember that? What was that? Final velocity plus initial velocity divided by delta T. divided by delta t. We have the same thing for the angular counterpart. Omega replaces v, right? We keep that. And then there is one more. Which other equation can we come up with? Well, we have that equation, the Torricelli equation, right? V is square. I hate when that happens. Let's see. For some reason, you know. Let's see. This program changes the phone. And I never figured out why. We never figured out why. Okay, V naught. plus 2a delta x. Okay, again, the, uh, what's going on here? Okay. Again, we replace b with omega, right? X with theta and A with alpha. So those are the four equations that you have to know. Uh, we have only three independent equations. Whereas this one is a dependent equation, the equation that depends on those two here, okay? 
Again, only three independent equations for uniformly accelerated motion. And that was the books talking about the equation of rotational kinematics, right? So we can derive that like before. Uh, what do they do here? Okay, in example four, the angular velocity of the plumb blade changes. Well, therefore, the average angular velocity is midway between the initial one, right? Half of, you know, final plus initial. Final plus initial. Okay, they, they change the, the order, right? That should be at the beginning and this other one at the end. Okay, yeah, he put with W not here. Good, All right? Okay, and the derivation process is exactly the same. Remember all the four equations, right? See here, one, two, three, three independent, one dependent. All the problems in in rotational rotational kinematics can be solved using those three equations right in here. And sometimes, and we list this one just because it's very convenient to have it around. But strictly speaking, in order to solve your problems, all you need are those three equations here for this type of motion, right? For uniformly accelerated motion. We go, and then we have all the symbols that relate to one another, right? V is related to omega, X related to theta, I, A for acceleration is related to alpha. Here the equations. Okay, and we have some this this example here. Let's take a quick look. The blades of electric blender are whirling with an angular velocity 375 radians per second. The puree button, while the puree button is pushed in, as figure 8.8 .8 shows. Green puree blend, whatever, whatever, right? When the blend button is pressed, the blades accelerate and reach a greater angular velocity. Start at 375 radians per second. Have you thought about that? 375 radians per second. You know, it's very fast, right? I cannot do 375 radians per second with my hand. It's humanly impossible. Only mechanical devices can do that. The maximum that I can do is five five uh, rotations per second, five rotations per second is around uh, 10 pi radians, which is around 30 radians per second. Five radians per second, you know. No, five, five rotations per second, five rotations times two pi, right? It's 10 pi. 10 pi is approximately third, 30 radians per second. That's the maximum that a human hand can handle, okay? Very maximum. So anything above that, you gotta use mechanical devices. So what is gonna have ask you? Reach a greater angular velocity. Angular velocity goes, let's see. Okay, after angular displacement of 44 radians, you know, it uh, reaches a constant angular. Let's see, the angular acceleration has a constant value. Find it, okay. Okay, so here you go. So this problem is a little bit different, right? Let's let's take a look at that. I'm gonna copy and paste in my notes and we'll solve together how to here you go. Here is the problem in the oh, not this one. You don't let me copy, do they? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh copy. Yeah, they let me copy. Good. Let's see if we can do it now. No, they don't let me copy. Okay. Okay, I'll have to formulate the problem. Okay, what the problem has. Okay, initial angular velocity. Okay, I'm going to write that down. Initial angular velocity 375, right? Radians per second, right? Yeah, 
375 um, readings per second. Then he tells you that uh, when the blend button is pressed, the blades accelerate and reach a greater angular velocity that we do not know, final angular velocity, after the blades have rotated through an angular displacement of 44 radians, right? Okay, so my delta theta, my delta theta here is, Forty four regions. Mm -hmm. What else does it uh, does it have? The angular acceleration is one seven four zero. The angular acceleration is alpha. One seven four zero regions per second square. Okay, so they are asking me. Find the final angular velocity. That's what he's asking. All right, so I'm gonna write that down. This is a very simple way of what I did here is a very simple way of summarizing the problem that we are trying to solve. Put the question mark right in here. Okay, so you have to find an equation that's going to allow you to solve your problem, right? One, two, three, and non, uh, three that are non, and one that's a non. So you have to go back to your equation, right? To your equation, see which can solve. It's not uniform motion. It's not uniform motion because you're changing the angular velocity it must be uniformly accelerated motion, right? Let's see which one can help us solve the problem. Remember, those we have like three equations that are independent and one equation that is independent, right? See, you know, for this problem, remember, I want to know omega. I already know. The problem gives you omega naught, and the problem gives you alpha, but it doesn't give you t. Okay, do you see t here? We don't have t here. Okay. The problem gives us a delta theta. Yeah, we do have delta theta here. See that? All you gotta do is to pass theta naught to the other side. We do have omega naught, but we do not have omega. We do have alpha here, right? but we do not have T nor omega, right? Okay, we do not have T nor omega. But if you think a little bit, uh, you know, about that, we do have omega here. So if we combine those two equations, we can first solve for T, right? So for T, place it right in here and then find out what omega is. Make sense, okay? We can solve this equation for T, plug it here. And then this T is gonna be a function of omega and then we can solve for omega. That's one way, but let's keep on looking, okay? So those two equations would solve our problem but would give us a certain degree of difficulty to do that because we would have to use two equations to solve our problem. But let, let's keep on looking at our other options, right? Everything that's both face here is an unknown. Okay. What about here? Do we have average omega? We do not have average omega. We do not have delta t. And we do not have omega, <laughs> right? One, two, three unknowns here in a single equation. So, but if, uh, but we don't want to know average omega, we want to know omega. So let's discard this equation. You know, this equation wouldn't be of any help because we already know that we can solve those, those two. But let's see if there's another equation that can help us solve this problem, okay? We have this equation here. We have to know what omega is. 
we do know what omega naught is. We have the value of delta theta and it provides us with alpha. Hey, folks, that's the equation we, would be easier for us to use to solve the problem, right? All you have to do now is just a straightforward solve solution. So instead of using two equations to choose for two, to solve for two unknowns and get our final result, we just use this last one right in here. That's the technique that you have to to look. Okay. So if we do that, let's go through, through here this this problem, right? Go. Omega, omega naught, there is no T. Okay, let me see if it did in my, like my way. Doesn't look like it did. Oh, yeah. From equation, right? He put theta here. The right way would be the other theta. Okay. And so he used this. Why this equation is huh, strange? See here. Huh. Looks like there's a problem right in here, right? Let me see. Uh oh. I got a point that I didn't want to get. Oh, no. It's jumping chapters. Sorry, folks. No, we are here. 8.3. Okay. Do you have the numerical? Yeah, I cannot see the numerical results here. All right. So, so we have another problem here. Okay. So that's what we have for this section 8.3. Now let's talk about angular variables and tangential variables. Okay. So there is a relationship between the angular variables, theta, omega, and alpha with the tangential variables. One of the tangential variables is the velocity, the, the velocity of the point, okay? Notice that if an object is undergoing circular motion, doesn't have to be uniform, like this guy here, it, he will have, the object will have a tangential velocity. And there is a way to relate this tangential velocity to the angular parameters, okay? So here you go, let's go back here to this drawing. Mm -hmm. You know what? I, I think I'm gonna use I'm gonna use this one here instead. Okay. So remember, you know the velocity. You know, let's go back here to the definition of velocity, right? Or in this case, I would say the speed, right? Relation, relation between. Lin uh, tangential quantities, angular. I'm gonna put angular quantities. They are not quantities, okay? They are definitions. But let let's use that anyway. Angular quantities and tangential quantities. Okay. What are the angular quantities again? Angular quantities. Theta, omega, and alpha. Don't go. Huh? Huh? Going on here. I'm gonna use that. Copy and paste here. We don't get into trouble. Alpha. Angular quantities. 
tangential quantities. Yeah, one of the tangential quantities is the velocity, because the velocity is always tangential to the pass. Right? If you put this object to rotate here, you're going to have a vector velocity here. You're going to have a vector velocity here. And this vector velocity will always be tangential to the path of the particle. Tangential, you know, vector velocity here and so on. Okay? And uh, this velocity is going to be what? This velocity is going to be delta S over delta, uh oh, delta T. Delta T. We also remember also that there is a there is that definition of angle, right? Remember the definition of angle that we got it, delta theta is equal to a delta S over R. Okay. If we solve for delta S, we get R delta theta. Okay. And now we go ahead, replace delta S into the equation for B. And we get what? Okay, we get R times delta theta over delta T. Okay. In this case here, you know, strictly speaking, this guy would be the average angular velocity. But if we take the limit, if we take the limit as delta theta and delta t going to zero, okay, what we end up getting is that the instantaneous speed of this particle Limit. I'm gonna find my limit here. Where's my limit here? Here you go. This is the limit that I want. Delta t going to zero. Delta s going to zero. All right? We get something like that. Here you go. We get this order. And now this guy becomes replaced by delta theta because the R was taken out of the equation. What we end up having is just R instantaneous angular velocity. Okay? And what does it tell us? It tells us that uh, for a rigid body, the omega, the angular velocity, is the same anywhere at any uh, at a given instant of time. Okay, so if this guy is rotating with an angular velocity omega, let's write it down here. Omega here. Here you go. Angular velocity omega. This omega applies to every point in this rigid body. This point is undergoing a angular velocity omega. This point is undergoing angular velocity omega at any uh, at a given instant of time. 
Okay, this point here in this object has the same angular velocity as this point here in this object at a given instant of time. At different instant of time, you know, they're going this angular velocity is going to be the, different than the previous one, but it's still going to be the same as the other point. Those throughout this object, which by the way is a rigid object, applies just to rigid object, objects, and that's what we're covering. The angular velocities of all those points here is going to be the same. Okay, and what does it mean? Let's let's go back here. Uh, we need this one here. Okay. This point A two prime has the same angular velocity as this point A prime, which has the same angular velocity of this point A. However, because their distances from the center are different, their linear velocity or tangential velocities are going to be less. Okay? So what we can say, you know, for a given, for a given, for a given rigid body, at a given instant of time, okay, T, the linear, the tangential velocity of different points in the, on the, on the rigid body, are going to be greater for objects that are further away from the axis of rotation, okay? So if I were to illustrate the velocity vectors of those points, and now I'm going to simplify the drawing like I mentioned to you, I'm not going to put a prime, a two prime there, right? If I were to illustrate the the tangential velocity of each of those points, I can draw, you know, I can I'll be able to draw vector velocities like that because we go if I want to do it right huh I am going here you go they would increase linearly with R if this vector velocity has this length. This other vector velocity must be this other length and this other one here is gonna be even shorter until you reach the center of the circle and the object will have no tangential velocity whatsoever. The tangential velocity of the object is gonna be zero, right? So here we go. It's a very good way of illustrating the vector velocities of those points. And by the way, this line here must be perpendicular to this other one here, to the radial line. Uh, like that. Okay, that's what this is this thing is all about. Okay. The tangential velocity increases linearly with the distance from the center of rotation. That's one. Let's see if we have more. Okay, he call it tangential velocity. Crack the wick. This is the crack the wick. Okay. So
What about the tangential acceleration, right? What about the tangential acceleration? Okay, so here you go. We may have a tangential acceleration too, especially if the object has a angular acceleration. If the angular acceleration is zero, okay? If the angular acceleration is zero, comma, the angular velocity will be constant, right? And the speed of points at, at the same distance from the axis of rotation will have the same value. Same value, same value. And the speeds of points at the same distance from the axis of rotation will have the same value. But what if, let's see, if angular acceleration is zero, the angular velocity will be constant and the speeds of points at the same distance from the axis of rotation, we have the same value, right? The angular velocity will be constant and the speed, uh, we have the same value. Uh, we have the same, we have the same value and uh, let's see, we will be constant at the speeds of points at the same distance. Not only the uh, same axis of rotation, we have the same uh, same distance. We have the same value, and but let's see, let's see. I got, I got to rephrase that, right? Angular acceleration is zero. Angular velocity constant. Speeds of points at same distance from the axis of rotation. We have the same value, and these. Same the speeds will be constant as well. Will be constant. Okay. But what if we have an angular acceleration? Okay, you already know, right? You already know if we have an angular acceleration, if we have an angular acceleration. You already know that the angular velocity will change in time, okay? But let's not forget, even though you change in time, angular velocity will not change in space at a given instant of time, okay? However, however, at a given instant, of time, the angular velocity will be the same throughout the rigid body. Throughout the rigid body. Okay? Throughout the rigid body. However, um, as time goes by, as time goes by and the angular velocity changes, so will the tangential velocity. Remember? Tangential velocity is given by omega r. If this omega r is changing in time for a given point in the rigid body, the tangential velocity is going to change as well. Okay? From the, that comes from this equation right in here. Okay? If the tangential velocity is changing, this since, no, not if, but since, right? The tangential velocity is changing. This means that we must also have a tangential acceleration. Okay. Okay. So, how do we define the tangential acceleration? 
Let's take a look here. So I'm gonna denote the tangential acceleration just by the letter T A. Okay, it's going to be final velocity minus initial velocity over delta T. Delta T, right? Yeah, I just to keep uh, consistent with the book, let's put the T there in the subscript. But let's not forget that the final velocity is going to be what? Omega, final omega times R. And the initial velocity is going to be what? Initial omega times R, right? So what else do we have? You know, we can put the R in evidence. And then what we have at the top is going to be delta omega. Delta omega. R delta omega over delta T. But R o, delta omega over delta T is what? Is R times angular acceleration, just like we defined before. Okay? So that what we have here in this one. Right here, regions per second, okay? So we can come up with the angle, with the tangential acceleration of the blades of this helicopter. It's 11, 12 right now. Let's see, we have 22 students this time. Did anybody showed up that was not uh, the beginning of the course? At the beginning of the, oh, me here. here. At the beginning of the meeting, now we have 22 students, right? Let me just call here. Go, Jade, are you there, Jade? Janet, it looks like it's Janet, right? Are you there, Janet? Yeah, yeah I'm here. Okay, good. I'm, I'm going to give you half, okay, Janet, since you, you joined us a little bit late. I, I joined it when the Zoom meeting started, but my really? laptop died. Uh, Okay, I'll give you one. Okay, anybody else? That's 11.13 right now. Any questions? So let's summarize here, right? You know, lean tangential velocity is R omega. That's not difficult, right, to memorize, right? And tangential acceleration is... Uh, R alpha. Oh no, 